Okay, class. <clears throat> so, um, I'm making this video because I'm not sure if I will be able to make it to the first class meeting at 1010 tomorrow on the 18th. <clears throat> so, um, basically this is a recording of what I would have gone over otherwise. Um, so what I've started off here as showing you guys the Canvas course. This is the layout. So 2020 uh, Bio 340 section 42612. So if you are watching this and this is the section you're signed up for, then you're in the right place. Um, over here on the left side, um, there's some things that I can see that you can't see. So this is uh, showing you you can't see the announcements or the quizzes. Um, I'm not sure how that's set up or why that's set up that way, honestly, but um, it is. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to settings and then I'm going to go to student view so you guys can sort of see what it looks like from your end. So this is what it's going to look like. Uh, this is where you're going to find this introduction video. The TA, Brandon Favre, is going to hopefully direct you to this or he might live uh, go over it. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do this. Um, <clears throat> but anyway. So the home screen will have the intro video, uh, the lectures, uh, I decided I'm going to do uh, synchronous lectures since you guys signed up for a face-to-face -face class. Um, so we're going to do that through Zoom. It's really the only uh, system that can handle that large of a group. And we have 60 students without um, any sort of video lag or anything like that. Um, everyone should have access to Zoom. Um, if not, uh, you might have to uh, click on Zoom, which is on the left side, which is right here, um, and then sign up for it. <clears throat> so anyway, if there are two separate things going on here in Zoom. One is for lectures and office hours for me. So if you click on this, it'll take you to all of the lectures. All right, so it'll say Bio 340 Lecture, and then you can just click on this to join. Um, Zoom won't let me start it at 1010. It has to be in 15-minute increments. So that's why it says it starts at 10 a.m., um, and it's going to run until noon. But that doesn't necessarily mean that um, you have to be there at 10. Um, the way that I set it up, and hopefully this is right, um, I'm not that... This is the first time I've really used Zoom for a class. So we'll, this might there might be some growing pains, but we'll see how it goes. So anyway, the way I set it up is you guys should be able to join. Um, when you join, your audio will be muted. That way there's not a lot of background noise going on. Um, you can unmute your audio uh, just by going to the bottom, and I'll show you that. So if you click on join, <laughs> um, you're going to have to register. Uh, and give your email address. That way we can't, we don't have, you know, Zoom party crashers coming in. Once you do that uh, and you confirm you're not a robot, then click register and you should be able to join the Zoom meeting. Um, so these are the lectures at 10 a.m. And then these are for my office hours, which are going to be on Tuesday and Thursday. And I'll show you that in the syllabus. And you can join that too. Um, all of these are going to, I'm going to record them and they'll get recorded into the cloud and cloud recordings. These are just a couple tester uh, recordings that I did and I'll delete these. They're, they're just nonsense. Uh, but you can access the recordings in case you're sick or you miss lecture or whatever. You should be able to, to uh, view the recordings. With that said, um, remember what you say in lecture and what you wear in lecture and all that other stuff is going to be recorded for everyone else to see. So, you know, just keep in mind that that's uh, what's going to go down. So, um, you know, uh, no one else will be able to access it except for people out of the, in, in the class. But um, I wouldn't divulge any any personal information unless you want everyone in the class to know it. So be careful what you say and, and uh, what your display name is and things like that. Okay, 
and then these will be previous meetings. So all of this is going to be recorded. Um, Brandon has set up separate. This is the TA, Brandon Favre. He has set up uh, a separate office hours for his Zoom. And we'll see how what comes on here. So he, he's going to host these, it looks like. And so when you guys uh, click on that, and then you'll be able to access that, hopefully. And again, um, I'm not 100% sure how this system's going to work and how well it's going to work. So we're just going to play it by ear. If there is some glitches or whatever, we'll work on fixing them. Uh, Brandon's office hours are going to be Monday and Wednesday from uh, 12 to 1, so right after lecture. <clears throat> All right, so let me skip ahead to the syllabus, and then we'll come back to that. So here's the syllabus. You guys can download that if you want. I'm going to click on it and download it. And, of course, it's right in the middle of where this recording thing is. Okay, so I downloaded the syllabus. This is the syllabus. I'm just going to click on Enable Editing. So anyway, uh, Bio 340, General Genetics, Summer A 2020, Section 42612 issue. This is me, Lewis Obermiller. I'm your instructor. <clears throat> Here's the my phone number uh, that you can call. Um, it's my Mesa Community College. So just a little bit of background. Uh, I have my PhD in Molecular and Cellular Biology and Biochemistry that I got from ASU in 1999. Um, technically, I didn't actually get my degree until 2000, but I completed all the requirements in 1999. Um, I started working for the National Cancer Institute, the National Institute of Health. Um, I worked uh, in breast cancer research for a while. Then I went and worked for the VA um, here in Phoenix doing cardiovascular disease and diabetes research. Uh, while I was doing that, um, Jeff Trent started TGen, Translational Genomics Institute. Um, Edison Liu, who I worked for uh, and with at the National Cancer Institute, um, told me that Jeff Trent was going to move here. MCC was looking to start a bio tech program, so they sort of recruited me from the VA in a roundabout way through Jeff Trent to start a biotechnology program at Mesa Community College. So I started that program in 2003, and I have been teaching at Mesa Community College for 17 years. I teach uh, biotechnology. Um, I do research there, um, but it's a little different than research at ASU because I don't have my own dedicated lab. I have to use the classroom biotech lab. We do gene editing using CRISPR-Cas9, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, uh, research during lecture. But we work on human orphan diseases, specifically a disease called Snyder-Robinson syndrome. Um, and what we're trying to do is edit genes to repair defective genes in children that have this disease. All right, so that's my background. So I'm I my main job. I'm a tenured residential faculty uh, member at Mesa Community College. Uh, like I said, I've been there for 17 years. I started teaching at ASU in 20, 2000, I want to say 2009. I think that's right. Uh, I started teaching genetics. Um, they, they got in a bind because somebody got upset with them and moved to San Diego, uh, UC San Diego, over the winter break. So I started teaching genetics there and I've sort of just been doing that. So what I'm called is a faculty associate, which is basically an adjunct professor at ASU. So I don't have an office there. I don't have a phone there or anything like that. I just use all my information at Mesa. Um, anyway, so this is my office phone at Mesa. You can call it with, when you do and leave a message. Uh, the computer system sends me an email with an attachment of a MP3 audio recording. So I can, I'll get your message through email, essentially. 
Um, I'm not allowed on campus. Nobody is right now. Um, so I couldn't go there and retrieve messages anyway. I'd have to do that remotely. Uh, with that said, the easiest way to, eat, to get a hold of me is just to email me, uh, lewis.obermiller at asu.edu. Um, you can also email me at obermiller at mesacc.edu, either one. Um, my office hours are going to be, like I said, uh, my office hours are Monday and Wednesday. Um, and I'm, I'm just thinking, did I set that up? Did I set up Zoom to be Tuesday, Thursday for me? I'm not sure. I'll have to fix that. But anyway, my office hours are Monday, Wednesday, 12 to 1. Um, we're going to do office hours via Zoom. Uh, there'll be a waiting room there so that people can can discuss stuff privately. So I may put you in the waiting room until I get done with the student and then allow you to come in uh, and discuss things. Just keep in mind that if you want, if you have anything personal that you want to discuss, let me know so that we can put people in the waiting room and then have a private discussion. And again, uh, the office hours, I don't think I'm going to record office hours. I don't think that's necessary. I will record the lectures, but not the office hours because I don't want personal stuff uh, that people might uh, tell me during office hours to be recorded. Um, anyway. So if you guys want, you know, usually there's a group of students that go help you need help going over the problem sets and stuff like that. So that's probably mostly what we're going to do during office hours. Brandon Favre is a PhD student in the MCB program, like in the biology program, same program that I went through that I graduated from. Um, he's really good. Um, he's been TNA TNA this class for me for three years. This is his email. Um, he will also have office hours via Zoom. Um, and he's going to do Tuesday, Thursday from 12 to 1. So if I screwed this up or whatever, I'll fix this in Zoom. But um, that's whatever's on this syllabus is what we're going to do. The lecture, I was going to make it asynchronous. But then I thought that you guys signed up for a live face-to-face -face class. And so I wanted to try to make it as face-to-face -face as possible. So the synchronous class means that it's live you log in at 10 o'clock like i said because zoom won't let me set up at 10 10 and then uh the class will end at 11 50. you know there might be some people straggling afterwards asking me questions and so we'll try to wrap everything up at 12 and then if you have any additional questions you can join me during my office hours this will all be done via zoom um, and then like i said i'm going to record the zoom lectures but not office hours. So if you have a specific question, then you should attend office hours. There is no lecture room. We're going to do this all through Zoom and the links are in Canvas. The books. So I uh, try to save students as much money as possible. And so there is an 11th edition. It's super expensive. There's not much difference. They What they did was change uh, it's mostly new pictures so if you're okay, okay with older pictures and then the 10th edition is completely fine this is the isbn i sort of looked it up on amazon before the class started looks like it's somewhere around 20 to 30 bucks for a 10th edition i think you can get the ninth edition for this ten dollars if i'm not mistaken uh maybe not including shipping so either one of these books work 10th edition is a little better than the 9th edition. I think it's uh, a little clear. Um, the genetic stuff is a little more, uh, written more clearly. So if you have the whereabouts or whatever, get try to get the 10th edition. And next semester, I'll phase out the 9th edition. So I think, you know, try to stick with 10. Um, if you want to get 11, you can, but you're on your own because I haven't gone through the 11th edition and looked at the page numbers and made any changes for this class. You should get the solution manual for whatever edition you get. So if you get the 10th edition book, you should get the 10th edition solution manual. Um, this is just going to help you practice because you guys know as well as I do that if you want to get good at something like the guitar or baseball or soccer or football or golf, uh, you're not going to just pick up a golf club and go be Tiger Woods. Or you're not going to pick up a basketball and be Michael Jordan. You need to practice. 
and those guys practice every day. Uh, I know for a fact that Tiger Woods hits over a thousand golf balls a day, and Michael Jordan spent an entire summer, twelve hours a day practicing uh, to m get on his high school team. They were going to cut him. Um, so, if you want to get good at something, you got to practice. And if you want to be good at genetics, the only way to do that is to practice. And so that's what we're going to work on. Um, there's going to be some practice problems that you can do on your own. And the solutions to those practice problems are in these solution manuals. I think it's like 10 bucks, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on Amazon. Uh, I don't own Amazon stock, so you can buy it wherever you, wherever you find it. It's no big deal. <clears throat> so you're going to want a hand, uh, handheld uh, scientific calculator. Um, there's not going to be much that we do in here that's going to require any kind of advanced calculations. Uh, you definitely want one that does square roots because we're going to do some uh, probability and statistical analysis. You would want one that has uh, a factorial, so like a little exclamation point on it. Um, I bought one from the dollar store, so I paid a dollar for it. Um, you know, go check it out. Um, you can get a super cheap calculator that does factorials and square roots, but that's really all mo what you need. Um, I don't allow graphing or programmable calculators during exams, so and you have to show your calculator to respond as a uh, lockdown browser while it's recording you for the exam. So uh, make sure that you don't you're not using a programmable or graphing calculator because if I find out that you are then I'm going to nullify your exam. Um, and if you're not sure, send me a picture uh, via email before you take your exam, and I'll let you know if it's good or not. But I think you guys know what we're ta I'm talking about. Basically, I don't need to be able to program it or use any graphing functions because that's sort of... It could be a way to be academically dishonest, uh, to put it nicely. All right, so this course is going to survey genetics. Um, so it's the, the biological science of studying heredity and variation. Um, and we're going to go over that in the first lecture. So sort of just an overview is that we're going to look at the techniques and uh, the latest information and techniques in the field of genetics. We're going to look at classical rules of genetics uh, and in, with it respect to inheritance, so Mendelian genetics. We're going to look at how we can apply that to the modern knowledge of the structure and function of genes um, and how genes work. Um, we're going to basically go in depth from Bio 181 um, uh, on the molecular and cellular side of, of specifically genetics and heredity. Um, so there's three equally important components in genetics. One is molecular genetics, uh, and we're going to start the class off with that. So I'm going to do a little classical Mendelian genetics, and then we'll get into the molecular genetics. Transmission genetics, uh, this is Mendelian genetics, right? Uh, Gregor Mendel cross peas, and you probably covered that in Bio 181. And then we're going to look at population and evolutionary genetics. Um, this can get a little comp complex mathematically. Um, I think this is probably the hardest for students to grasp because of the math involved. But we're going to go over that and I'm going to show you how to do it. So don't get too overwhelmed. Um, we're going to do, we're going to learn how to solve genetics problems. So we're going to apply the stuff that we learn. So just watching lectures and listening to me isn't enough. You're going to need to be able to apply what you learn to solve genetic problems. And I'll show you that there are problem sets that I have listed. And there are problems that we're going to go over, uh, especially in the exam review. So I'll show you that in a second when we get to Canvas. You, the prerequisites for this class are bio uh, 187 and 188, which is essentially the first year of, of biology for maj majors. So uh, 181 and 182 would be the uh, equivalents at Mesa Community College. Um, but anyway, 
all the information that you got from that you should have retained hopefully if you haven't then you're going to play a little catch up because we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this uh, basic biology um, you should also have a good understanding of organic and general chemistry uh, a little bit of biochemistry meiosis and mitosis for sure the cell cycle for sure and then basic cellular and molecular biology um, that you hopefully got in 181 now i know that four-year universities aren't great at lecturing for 181 because generally they're research institutes not teaching institutes like community colleges so they're focused on hiring people that are good at research not teaching as opposed to a community college who's focused on hiring someone that's good at teaching and not research so you may be at a disadvantage um, depending on where you took your classes and what professor you had but we'll try to get you all caught up so that you uh, at least can understand the basics of what we're talking about all right so grading grades there's two midterms I'd call them midterms but essentially they're uh, middle of the term exams um, so I just call them exam one exam two and then final exam so three exams those exams are worth 250 points each um, but the point system isn't what it really counts it's the percentage of the grade so each of the exams count 25 percent of your grade there are four problem sets together they count for 25 percent of your grade the problem sets if i'm not mistaken and i i have to look so but i think these are out of 100 or 150 points and i want to say it's 150 points the reason that the problem sets are out of 150 points is so that you guys can get partial credit for work that you do if i made them worth less then it would be harder to give you partial credit uh, for things that you may have done and omitted in the problem sets so they're not weighted equally each problem set is worth 6.25 percent so that all four of those total 25 percent so one quarter of your grade is from the problem sets and then a quarter is from exam one two and three and that gives you 100 percent total for the class the exams will be done online and you will need to use respondus lockdown browser to take the exam that means that you need to have a computer or you also can use an ipad um, i'm not sure if respondus uh, has a system to work on a phone i don't think it does um, but you're going to need access to a webcam computer that can record you uh, while you're taking exams um, so make sure you have access to that if you don't you won't be able to take the exams um, if you miss an exam for whatever reason let's say you're in the hospital you got caught in the thresher or whatever um, then uh, I need an excuse so you will have to give me an excused absence you know some reason medical excused absence or whatever um, and then if you miss that exam what I'll do is I'll toss that exam and then just take the average grade of the other two um, and then once ever I average those the remaining exams then I'll give you the same grade that your average of your other two exams are if that makes sense and if it doesn't then hit me up later during office hours all right You can't miss more than one test right um, so after that you might have to take you might have to consider taking a medical withdrawal I grade the exams right so there will be a uh, multiple choice that you'll take online but there's also going to be a question that you're going to have to do um, while your lockdown browser is on and it's going to require you to use a piece of paper and um, uh, pen or pencil and then you're need going to take a picture of that and submit it along with the exam um, so uh, before you close your browser I'm not exactly sure how to set this up but I will figure it out before the first test and then I'll I'll be able to give you guys more information of how this is going to work but that's the plan um, once you start your test 
then you will finish the multiple choice part and then there will be a sh an, uh, you can call it a short answer slash essay portion that you're going to need to complete and then um, within the time frame of the exam and then take a picture of that and submit it along with your exam um, okay so we talked about missed exams um, this talks about regrading um, I grade the exams again so come and see me problem set so the problem sets will be posted in canvas they're due on the date listed in canvas um, you will be submitting these in canvas um, you can use uh, certain uh, file formats so uh, you can use uh, standard ones like JPEG, PDF, Word Docs, TIFF, GIF, uh, that sort of thing. Um, AWS doesn't work. Uh, Canvas doesn't know what to do with it. So um, don't submit uh, those uh, HELICs. Um, those don't work either. So uh, it'll tell you what formats you can uh, submit it in. Make sure that we can read your submissions. If we cannot read it, we cannot grade it. All right, we don't accept late work. Um, we expect you to attend the recitations, uh, which will be ongoing during lecture. So you never know when that's going to come up. Uh, we try to schedule for Fridays, but that doesn't always happen. Um, sometimes you'll be taking an exam on Friday. So um, just, you know, it's in your best interest to attend. Uh, lectures as much as possible so that you get an idea of um, how to do these problems because we're going to work on them in class. Uh, when you do the um, problem sets, I don't care if you guys work in groups. That's totally fine. You can set up a Zoom meeting and work together or Facebook page or whatever you want. Um, uh, the only thing is that it's important that each of you do your own work. And don't copy answers from each other or answers from me or any answers from previous keys because and you guys know that if you're doing someone else's work if you're if you are copying someone else's work and submitting it as your own work then what is that called it's called plagiarism and that can get you uh suspended from school it, it definitely could go down on your permanent record so it's not a good idea to do that um we've been doing this a long time me and the tas and so we're pretty good at spotting this um so you guys make sure that you do your own work it's really important i mean i made the problem set so that you guys would be able to practice stuff so if you just copy the problem sets and you don't understand how to do them, whenever it comes time to take the test and you see similar questions on the exam, you're not going to know how to do them. So you're going to fail the test. Remember, the problem sets are only 6.25% of your grade, but the tests are 25%. So one question on a problem set is worth less than 1% of your entire grade. Um, so if you screw it up, it's better to do that and learn what you did and learn from your mistakes than it is to just copy somebody else's work and turn it in as your own. So don't do it. It's not, it's totally not in your uh, best interest. Brandon, we may get another TA. I'm not sure. I've, I asked for one, but we'll see. Um, he's responsible for grading the problem sets and I have given him complete and utter authority over doing that. So you guys, um, if you have any issues with your grades on the problem sets, then you need to talk to him. So I'm responsible for the exams and he's responsible for the problem sets. So uh, arrange a meeting with him and see if you guys can work it out. If it comes down to it and you can't agree on whatever, then I will get involved. But uh, you don't want to get me involved. Uh, so do your best to try to work this out. Uh, with the TAs. Any request for regrading has to be done within one week um, when you get your grade and it's and that's at our discretion. 
like I said, no quizzes, assignments, or whatever, no makeup uh, at all. All right, we talked about recitation, so we're good with that. Lecture attendance, I'm not going to take attendance per se, but I've done this long enough to know that um, even for an online class, it's it, students usually do worse than in-person classes. And the reason I think is, is that they don't have the opportunity to interact with the professor and ask questions on the fly. So, and a lot of students are too shy or nervous to ask questions. So they rely on other students to ask those questions for them. I'm telling you guys that I'm super laid back and I'm not gonna think that you're, you know, inferior or anything like that. I was a student once too, just like I tell my kids when they try to get away with junk. Um, and so I've been there and I empathize with you guys. So I, I want you to ask questions. It's super important if you don't understand something, the only way that you're gonna understand it is to ask questions and speak up. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, if I'm doing lecture and you have a question, go ahead and unmute your microphone, ask your question, Zoom will put you front and center. Um, and then uh, I will do my best to answer that question. You can also answer, uh, ask questions in the in the uh, text message portion, uh, the comments portion of Zoom. So either way is fine, uh, but don't be afraid to ask questions. Like super important. I promise you if you're, if uh, there's a question in your head, uh, there's probably a bunch of other people wondering the same thing. And if you nobody is brave enough to stand up and just say, hey, what's what's the deal with this? Then it's just going to go by and it's never going to get addressed. So make sure you guys ask questions if you need to. Um, all right. So sometimes I will give assignments uh, just to make sure that people are uh, coming to class. Uh, usually it's extra credit assignment. So. If I do do that, I won't take any late assignments. Make sure you guys try to arrive on time for Zoom meetings because when you get into a Zoom meeting, it tends to have make a noise when people enter and exit, uh, which can be disrupted. So try to come out on time um, and then try to stay for the entire class. Uh, like I said, you'll are you'll automatically muted uh, during Zoom lecture. You can unmute yourself to ask questions like we already talked about. Uh, but make sure you re yourself after you're done speaking. That just prevents all this background noise. I mean, I know we're all at home. I got kids, animals, you know, all kinds of stuff, distractors, neighbors, screaming, having birthday parties. Uh, so, you know, it helps to minimize distractions uh, by muting yourself unless you have uh, something to say. All right, syllabus, problem sets, announcements, all that other stuff is posted on Canvas. The, there are PowerPoint slides that accompany each lecture, but the PowerPoint slides are my guide uh, to help me know where I'm supposed to be uh, and what I'm supposed to be talking about. I can't put every single thing that I want to convey to you guys on a PowerPoint slide because it would just be like me showing images of a textbook. So. A lot of students think, oh, it's not on the PowerPoint, then that's not on the exam. And that's not true at all. Um, it's The PowerPoints are just an outline of the more in-depth discussion we're going to have on each slide. So make sure if you're looking at the PowerPoints that you're also listening to the lectures and you have a good idea of what I'm talking about. Because the exams not only come from uh, what's on the PowerPoints, but from what I say and from the problem sets that we do. Remember, you have to apply this uh, information to solving genetics problems. Otherwise, what's the point of learning genetics? All right. Um, like, I will set up a discussion board in Canvas so you guys can ask questions with each other, and occasionally I'll go in there and take a look at it. If no one else can answer the question, then I'll... I'll step in and and help you guys and the TAs will do the same thing. Um, ASU will, will only allow me to withdraw you to a certain date. So after that date, um, 
there's nothing I can do about it. Like at MCC, um, when I enter grades, there's a drop down window and I can put A, B, C and all the way in and I can put a W in there too. But after the, the cutoff date for ASU, they will not allow me to give you a W. So after that date, you either have to take the grade that you get or your other option is that you have to take a full semester withdrawal. So if you're only taking one class, which is genetics in summer A, then that's not that big of a deal because you can just withdraw from the whole session. But if you're taking multiple classes, a couple classes during some summer A, you have to withdraw from all your classes all at the same time. Make sure that you pay attention to that withdrawal date um, because that's your responsibility, not mine. Um, your grades will be in Canvas and you will, have a, you will know uh, what your grades are at any given time. So um, you'll have to make that decision if you want to withdraw or continue with the course. But once that deadline is passed, there's nothing that I can do about it. Uh, it's that becomes an administration issue. Um, and you'll have to work it out with the registrar's office. All right. You guys know what academic dishonesty is. Don't cheat, right? If you don't cheat, then I don't, that doesn't give me a reason to, to try to catch you cheating. And so, you know, I don't want to go and talk to the Dean or, or anything like that. It makes me nervous. So, um, you know, you certainly don't want to go and talk to the Dean with me about academic dishonesty. So just don't do it. That's all I got to say. Um, there's really not a, a classroom, but I just want to remind you guys to be respectful and professional when we do these online lectures and office hours. And if you're not acting appropriately, um, I will remove you as the host or the TA as co-host can also remove you. This is the schedule that we're going to go uh, by uh, or try to go by. I mean, since it's a live class, I don't know uh, how fast or slow. Um, anytime you're doing a live class, uh, if students have a lot of questions, then it goes slower. And if they don't, it goes faster. So we're going to try to stick to the schedule, but the exams won't move. I've put enough buffer in here to there. And I've taught this enough times to know that we will get through all this information before each of the exams. So the exams are here in red. Um, you're going to have, like I said, three exams. First one is on June 5th. And then you're going to have weekly problem sets. So your first problem set is due on May 29th. And that's already posted in Canvas. So you can take a look at that. Uh, like I said, uh, a, this first exam you'll have until midnight. Uh, 11.59 p.m. on June 5th to begin this exam. Um, and then each exam is going to be uh, the same length as the class but I also um, add an extra hour in so you guys will have what is the class an hour and 40 minutes so you'll have two hours and 40 minutes to complete each of the exams um, and I'll set those up and remember you're gonna need uh, a computer by the way um, I've also been told that Chromebooks don't work so if you have a Chromebook, you may have an issue. Um, and I'm not sure what the workaround for this, but let me know if you don't have a computer with a web camera or an iPad, uh, because you're going to have a difficult time taking these exams without that. Um, and then we're going to go through each of these. Like I said, the lecture, the PowerPoint lectures for the first exam will do lectures one through nine. Uh, second exam is 10 through 15, and the third exam is 16 through 20, right here. And then this is the chapters. So this is for the ninth edition chapters, and then these are the chapters out of the 10th edition. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to close the syllabus, and then we're going to go back to the can Canvas course. So here's all the lectures and, and office hours. Yeah, I think I made my office hours Tuesday and Thursday. 
So anyway, I'll have to go back and fix that so that they're on on uh, Monday and Wednesday because uh, me and Brandon switched. All right. So actually, maybe I'll just have him switch and do his on Monday and Wednesday, and I'll change the syllabus accordingly. That's probably better. So I'll just leave this. I'll do Tuesday, Thursday office hours, and I'll have Brandon do Monday, Wednesday. All right. So we'll go back home so you can see. This is uh, Brandon will have his office hours. This is the uh, questions about respondus. So um, you can watch this video. Um, I have my computer audio turned off so I didn't get an echo. But anyway, if you have questions about how Respondus Lockdown Browser works, you can watch this video. And then it also talks about um, how to install and troubleshoot, uh, how to work Canvas. Um, I don't think we do Blackboard anymore. That's a couple years old, maybe three years old. Um, so anyway. This is where you can download and install the Lockdown Browser. All right, so it will tell you what version you have. And then you can click on Install Now, and it will install it on your computer. Here's the PowerPoint. So we're going to start with Lecture 1. Again, I'm in Student View. So you can download this. You can click on this and download it if you want. Um, Canvas can also, it does a pretty good job of, of translating uh, the Office suite in fairly well. So this is pretty much what the slide looks like. And anyway, so we're, we'll go through this and we'll talk about the, all the lecture and everything um, when we start into class. We'll probably get to this uh Tomorrow later, uh, maybe 11.30 or 12. Well, wait, class ends at 1150. Maybe around 11.30, um, we'll get to this. You guys can go ahead and watch this video. And then uh, I, uh, I'm going to try to make uh, these lecture videos for each of the lectures too. But anyway, we'll see how that works out. Okay. So here's all the lectures, lecture one, two, three, four, five, and then the subjects that they cover. Like, and it'll tell you right here, this is the last lecture for exam one. So you're responsible for one through nine and all the material in that for exam one. And then this tells you last lecture for exam two material right there. So 10 through 15 is on exam two. And then uh, 16 through uh, 20 is for the final. This is just in case I had extra time. Um, and we talk about transposons, but I, it hardly ever happens that way. So um, I wouldn't count on that. These are problem sets that you guys can practice for the Mendelian crosses, um, which you're probably going to see on their first exam. So um, you should try these problems. So it says several black guinea pigs of the same genotype were mated and produced 29 black and 9 white. Uh, what would you predict the genotypes of the parents to be? So, um, I don't want to give too much away, but what we know for this uh, is, and you'll see this after we do uh, the Mendelian genetics lecture, is that if you have two true breeding guinea pigs, let's say one is black and one is white, and then this is a complete dominant situation, there will be no white guinea pigs in the F1 generation. So um, the only way that you could get uh, black and white guinea pigs is if two heterozygous guinea pigs interbred, then you would expect Mendelian ratios to be three to one. So if I added all these up, I would get 38 offspring I know that uh, 29 divided by 38 is roughly 75%, and 
and 9 divided by 38 would be roughly 25%. So that's exactly what I ex would expect from uh, the phenotypic ratios for F2 generations for Mendel. And so the genotypes of the parents, they would be both heterozygous. So big B, little b uh, times big B, little b. So they'd have one black allele, one white allele in each of the parents. And then you can go back and you can check your work. So here's the answer sets. And basically what I just explained to you should be on here. So we can add them up. 38, we do 29 divided by 38, that's 76.3%. Anyway, three, four, roughly three to one ratio, and so they have to be both heterozygous, big B, little b, times big B, little b. And then go through all the questions and make sure that you know how to answer these because these are the same questions, sort of questions that you'll see on the exam. Um, the end of each chapter has practice questions. I've sort of laid them all out, uh, the questions that you can use. So uh, for the Ninth edition, it's not uh, bold. Tenth edition, it's bolded. So in the tenth edition, there's no chapter one questions. Uh, so this first thing set only applies for the ninth edition. Um, the, for the tenth edition, I wrote out the questions because they had them scattered out throughout the, the um, book. So anyway, those are the questions for that. For chapter two, these ones are, because they're not bolded, they're in the ninth edition. These are the exact same questions that are found in the 10th edition. So if you guys are looking for problems to practice on, you can do that. And then again, make sure you get the, um, the answer guide that goes along with the text, whatever edition you choose. And it'll have the, the answer keys for each of these in it. Okay. There are study guides for each of the exams. You should be able to answer all of these questions. Um, so it's talking about uh, chapters 1 through 3, and 7 through 9, and 15. Make sure you know the DNA structure and replication. You should be able to do this, draw the structure of nucleotides. Label the main components, explain the difference between five and three prime ends of nucleic acids, why is the difference important, and so on and so forth. This is not an exhaustive, exhaustive list. I didn't put every single thing that you need to know on here. It's just I went through the lecture PowerPoints and uh, wrote down all most of the things uh, that we covered. But there may be some things not on here that we do cover, so I don't want you to think that if you know everything on here that you're golden because you may not be but you should know everything on each of these uh, before you take the exam um, the for the exams there's PowerPoint reviews And so there are questions here. If you, you can't see the question set, so if you download them. So I downloaded the PowerPoint and opened it and um, and PowerPoint. You can use PowerPoint Viewer too if you want. If you go to the normal view, um, there's a note section underneath that you can't see on your screen, but I'll try to expand it a little bit. So right here, um, you'll have the answers for the questions. And so you can go through each of these PowerPoint slides. And this one will tell you the answer is A. And so on. Um, this one answers A. This one is B. And so on and so forth. Now, um, let me close this out. I'll move this up a little bit. Okay. So, um, We go back. 
I'm going to go to the PowerPoint reviews. So this is a, I split this into two parts because the exam one covers a lot of the semester. And then uh, Brandon has uh, set up some notes to explain why each of the answers are what they are. So if you don't understand why it's A, um, you can go back and look at the uh, answer key that uh, Brandon made up and it will help explain why each of the questions are what they are. He's going to do this as a live review too, so that you guys can ask uh, more in-depth questions of this uh, when we get to that. All right, so back to Canvas. For the other um, exam reviews, so here's the PowerPoints for exam two review, and then I went ahead and made a video and I went over each of the questions. We're not going to have enough time because of the shortened uh, summer schedule to have a review for every exam. So you guys can go in here and it'll take you to my And then you can watch the review here. All right, and then same thing with uh, for exam three, the final exam. There's another video review that goes over the PowerPoints that I made. These are animations that will help you for DNA replication, uh, for the leading and lagging strand, transcription, translation. Uh, videos will talk about the LAC operons, the repressor, super repressor. And then non-disjunction in meiosis and chromosomal inversions, uh, paracentric, pericentric, and so on and so forth. These are lectures from last summer, uh, audio lectures that I did when I was in front of a live studio audience. Uh, and then the summer before that too, I put them both on there because sometimes there's not a recording. My recorder fails or... Um, I wasn't there because something happened or whatever. These are papers that I'll refer to when we talk about in lecture. So this is, uh, we'll talk about our viruses alive. We'll talk about mitochondria Eve and why Adam when we talk about population genetics. Um, we'll talk about how uh, you get, derive some of these equations. So this is a probability of fixation of mutations in a population. I'm going to go over the math, but you guys, are more than welcome to look at the papers to see how the math was derived if you want and that's why i posted them here or you can just take my word uh, for the formulas either way i'm fine with it, it doesn't bother me um i think i just closed that out okay so i logged myself out so i'm gonna have to go back in Student view here. There we go. So, animations we talked about, lecture audio we talked about, scientific papers. The I give you a formula list for exam two, so you guys are allowed to print this out. You can show it to the lockdown browser so that I can see that that's the formula sheet that you're using and not something else that you've written down or, or you know, are being dishonest about. So that's the home page. Um, let me scroll up. Syllabus assignments. The assignments, there's not that many. Um, you have a problem set that's coming up. Um, that'll be available tomorrow. So your first problem set. And your problem sets and exams, all of the assignments will be here. So you, there's four problem sets and three exams. Um, this is the discussion board. These are from old discussions. So 
I'll remove these and you guys can start your own discussion. Grades. Nobody has any grades yet. But the, your grades will appear there. The people in the class. Uh, external links to pages. So there's different links. PowerPoint. Uh, Word Viewer. PowerPoint Viewer. Acrobat Reader. Fun things with genetics. You know, YouTube, sometimes they pull stuff down. So that might these might not be available anymore. Um, this one is, I'm sure, is a copyright issue. Um, and then there's some other videos and stuff that we'll talk about. Crash Course, I kind of like Crash Course because they have uh, a big budget so they can do green screen stuff. Um, and then uh, videos to different... Um, the trip operon embryogenesis things like that right. zoom this is where you click on to go to the meetings too and then we're already kind of linked out well, I don't think we're going to use Google Drive we're not using Pearson either so I might hide those All right, so that's pretty much it. That's the intro to the course. Um, as far as text and stuff, um, you can get these texts relatively cheap on Amazon or any other online bookseller. Um, I have several copies of the textbook in the library, in Noble Library, so you can go and check those out. Um, you can't take them home, but you can use them for a couple hours. And again, if you have any questions or whatever, you can call me or email me. Um, and that's it. So I will uh, save this and then I'll put a link in it uh, where, where right here, intro. And then um, I don't know if Brandon's going to go over it. He might. But if you want to watch this, you can too. Uh, and then I'm going to try to join the class around 11. That's the goal. So uh, I'll see you guys soon.